Back in the late 90s, animated programs geared towards adults were proving to be popular, and executives at NBC wanted to capitalize on this market. As a start, they greenlit two original animated sitcoms, God the Devil and Bob, a show about a man named Bob finding himself stuck in a bet between God and the Devil, and another series, one that had fallen into the realms of lost media for approximately 11 years. That show is the animated David Spade comedy called Sammy. Oh wait a minute, that's my name. Sammy was created by comedians David Spade and Ray Sather, and was apparently loosely based on Spade's own life experience. The show's premise followed James Blake, a famous comedian whose deadbeat father Sammy re-enters into his life to freeload off of his success and wealth, as well as to try and bring the broken family back together. Sammy had 13 episodes made and ready to air, but sadly problems with the network had occurred. God the Devil and Bob had been cancelled after airing only 4 out of its 13 episodes due to a mix of low ratings and pressure from religious activists. This allegedly caused a change in management at NBC that wanted to outright end their venture into adult animated programming. However, the network was under contract to air at least the first two out of Sammy's 13 episodes, which they eventually did despite multiple delays and pushbacks. The show ran from August 8th till August 15th of the year 2000. After the two episodes, Sammy was immediately cancelled, never to air again. God the Devil and Bob managed to get a second life on Adult Swim, but Sammy never got that second chance. The show had had completely vanished and for a while had been considered lost. The only things related to the show that were available were a couple of stills and newspaper articles advertising it. Some animation cells from the show showed up online as well, but not a single clip of it had been found. Not even one TV trailer or bumper was available. Even Spade himself posted a tweet saying how he hoped someone would find the show. Nevertheless, on November 13, 2020, YouTuber L Supersonic Q made a video about Sammy, which is when I first learned about the show's existence. In the video, he states that he had contacted another Lost Media Wiki user by the name of Matt, who was also searching for the Lost cartoon. We learned that Matt was able to contact multiple crew members of the show, and had managed to reach one of them that was aware of the Lost Media Wiki page for Sammy. That crew member claimed that he had the entire series on VHS somewhere in his garage, but needed to search for them. And finally, six months later, in May of 2021, Matt uploaded the first episode of Sammy to his YouTube channel. The VHS tapes had been found and were being digitized. And and at the very end of the year, December 31st, 2021, all 13 episodes of Sammy became available online. I'll only be recapping the first episode, but spoilers for the entire show will appear from here on out. Episode 1 opens up with our main character, James Blake, voiced by David Spade, dead in his own pool, as his voice narrates to the audience with the cliched, Yep, that's me opening. Yep, that's me, James Blake. We learn that he's a famous actor who's mostly known for starring in a sitcom called Hey Rebecca. A show about a straight man pretending to be gay so he can share an apartment with a hot supermodel roommate. Yeah, this universe's Twitter would definitely try to cancel him in the future. We cut to a while back before the event of his drowning. That's when we meet his agent Mark Jacobs, voiced by Andy Dick, and James's assistant Kathy, voiced by Maura Tierney, as they're all watching the new trailer for James's movie, a shitty superhero comedy film called Mongo Man. Now that is gonna dent my butt. <laughs> <laughs> oh, why did I do this? At the same time, James's deadbeat dad Sammy, who's also voiced by Spade, arrives at the studio's entrance as he tries to trick the security guard into letting him in. Sue told me it wouldn't be a problem. Sue? Damn, there's always a Sue. James gets a call about his dad's arrival and drives back with him to his house. Through a flashback, we witness Sammy being threatened by a gang he owes money to, as he sees the Mongo Man trailer on TV, which makes him decide to reunite with his son. James pulls up at his fancy looking house, which immediately impresses Sammy. We meet one of James's two older brothers, Todd, voiced by Harlan Williams, who works as James's handyman and is kind of a dumbass. Hey, this isn't the kitchen? Later that day, James is getting ready for a photo shoot. There, Mark talks to Sammy about how important James's job is and how he shouldn't distract him since he's getting ready for the Mongo Man premiere. But Sammy's too busy ogling Kathy. Seeing how Mark is annoyed by Sammy, James gives his father the job to man the phones. Sammy gets taught to be his right-hand man and makes him set up a security monitoring system in the billiard area, now turned into Sammy's new office. They see Gary, James's older brother and business manager, voiced by Bob Odenkirk, arrive at the entrance. 
house. Shocked to see his father, he asks James on why he'd let him back into his life after he abandoned them as kids. James admits that he likes having Sammy around, but if he screws up, he'll kick him out. Sammy later screws things up. I hate how we share the same name, this is hitting way too close to home. He takes the Mongo Man movie premiere tickets from Kathy and tells her that he would personally hand them to the Hollywood executives they're meant for, but instead gives them out to a bunch of random hookers. Easy ladies, easy, one per hooker! Mark talks to James about Mongo Man sequels, and even though he's hesitant at first, he agrees once he learns how much money they'll make him. Wow, there aren't many actors in this town who could walk away from five million dollars. You know, now that you say it out loud, a sequel probably could tie up a lot of loose ends from the first Mongo Man. But we then see Sammy by the pool talking to the scriptwriter of Mongo Man 2 and tries to improve the story. At the premiere, James meets the writer who's angry about Sammy's notes. His agent Mark freaks out and looks for Arnold Schnitzer, the film's producer, to fix the situation, but finds the prostitute sitting in his place. <gasps> this is Arnold Schnitzer's seat! Okay, <gasps> it's go time. <gasps> Get him, Back at James's home, Sammy is confronted by everyone on how he messed up the premiere. He tries to defend himself, but to no avail. Mark later gets a call from Schnitzer, who's clueless about the entire situation, as he didn't even check for a ticket since he was never even bothered to attend it anyways. Schnitzer checks to confirm that James will be doing the sequels, and Mark takes the credit for getting James's role back. The next day, Sammy packs his bags and gets ready to leave, but James stops him and tells him that he was actually happy that he was at the premiere to begin with. And would like him to stick around. Sammy pretends that the car isn't working and he's only staying because of it. But then Todd walks by and tells Sammy that he took out the car's distributor cap like he asked. Uh, now what do you want me to do? Go back in time about 20 seconds and shut the hell up! The episode ends with James telling the audience that he knows he didn't explain how he ended up drowning, but yet it's a pretty cool shot. But you've gotta admit, it is a pretty cool shot. Cannonball! <laughs> Important note before I get to the actual review, in episode 1 there's a sudden skip in the video due to a glitch in the VHS to digital conversion process. Am I your agent or is Sammy your- You know, manning the phone. Are you offering me a job, buddy? So even though the show has been officially found, I do wonder if the episodes are intact. There isn't even any music for the end credits, which is weird, but I'll judge it for what it is now. The first thing that stuck out to me while watching the series is how surprisingly calm it was. Although, to be more accurate, it's not as loud as I thought it would be. I was expecting this to be an obnoxiously noisy adult cartoon, especially when I first heard Sammy's voice in the show. More on that in a bit. Still, it's not calm by the sense of, wow, this is like a slice of life show that really makes you feel the tranquility of the atmosphere. No, it's nothing like that, it's just not trying too hard to keep your attention at every second. We're introduced to a plethora of characters that have some nice interactions and exchanges between one another. James, the main character, is pretty cool and composed. He's very monotone in his line delivery. I don't know about you guys, but I think the premiere is going really well so far. This is in stark contrast with his father Sammy, who's not only loud and childish, but has a tendency to yell out every joke to emphasize the punchline. If you enjoy this service, get a card, a beeper number, a street corner, something low five. I guess since Spade voices both of these characters, it was a good idea to make them sound as different as possible, which also fits the show's narrative. The series primarily focuses on James and Sammy's relationship. James actually likes that his dad is back in his life, though he's not blind to how bad of a father Sammy was, as well as a terrible husband to his mother, and he does confront him every time Sammy tries to show off. What do I owe you? Including child support, mm, $900,000. Even though Sammy's a sleazy deadbeat, he does actually put in the effort to make things right every now and then, even though it's for selfish reasons at times. David Spade's voice for Sammy feels like his version of that annoying voice that Adam Sandler makes in a lot of his movies, and it walks the thin line between being kind of funny and really unbearable. Once you've poured the concrete, you don't stick around and watch it dry. You get in your dune buggy and you floor it. He sounds just like this. Although I can't really do the voice really well, it sounds more like a really bad impression of Shaggy. Like Zoe Scoop, did you fucking put crack in the fucking Scooby Snacks again? The good thing is that the show itself has a more mature approach. If it had the same overall energy that Sammy has, then I would have given up on it really quickly. The side characters also have some time to shine. Todd, Sammy's second child, is a big lovable dummy and a single dad to two kids that manages to keep things positive no matter what. But that can also be his downfall. In one episode, it makes him blindly want to get back with his 
cheating ex-wife and baby mama Gabriella, who just wants access to James's wealth. I think it was the little disagreements that finally did us in. For instance, I generally like staying home and watching sports on TV. Whereas you preferred to go out and have sex with every guy that wasn't me. Gary, the eldest of the three, craves for approval from a father figure to the point that it freaks out his stepdad. Keep that guy away from me. His absent father did leave an impact on him, one that affects his relationship with his wife, as well as being overly protective with his adopted son, Willie. Gary does hold a grudge against Sammy, but they do have moments of reconciliation every now and then that do feel sweet. Kathy, the hot, hardworking assistant, and James have a generic will-they-won't-they -they relationship. In one episode, James tries to confess how he feels after she breaks up with her boyfriend, but isn't able to, while in another episode, the reverse sort of happens. By the end of the series, they actually get together to the surprise of fucking no one. James's flamboyant agent Mark is quite incompetent at his job, with James being his only client. He has that catchphrase where he goes, who's the greatest agent in the world, waiting for somebody to say his name but nobody ever answers, so he just quietly says to himself, Mark Jacobs. They were really trying to make it into a thing. The episode where we see how he and James first met was pretty nice though, as we see their struggles and humble beginnings. Sammy had some notable moments with his grandkids, especially with Willie, who in one episode Sammy tries to use his video game talents in order to win some gambling money at the arcade. Though there wasn't much focus on any of them since the show was more centered around the adults and their lives, Willie's the one that managed to stand out the most out of all of Sammy's grandchildren. The will they won't they relationship between Kathy and James, though a concept done to death even back then is still done decently. Mark's flamboyant, possibly closeted homosexual depiction is also generic as hell but done well enough with the mixture of his failures as James's agent. In fact, really anything I can say about the show from its episodic storytelling to its writing is that it's done decently. But that's just it. Everything was done decently but not that interestingly. How were the characters? They were decent. How was the voice acting? It was decent. How were the jokes? They were decent. You hesitated. How was the animation? It was decent, but a bit janky at times. Yeah, the animation and character design of the show is honestly mediocre. I do find the character models to be a bit ugly at times. Not too ugly that it's repulsive, but not ugly in a purposeful, stylistic, duckman type of way either. The jokes, again though decent, didn't really make me laugh all that much. They were, well, humorous. But they didn't really make me laugh or anything, except for this moment for some reason. Dead man walking! What's it? Nothing, I'm just a squirrel, I can't talk. <laughs> My humor is broken. So I guess what I'm trying to say is, Sammy isn't very funny. Yeah, that checks out. I really like the show's theme song, not including the parts where Sammy annoyingly repeats his supposed catchphrase LO-FI over and over again. I personally find the show to simply be a product of its time, that was just meant to be watched casually as it aired on TV like it was supposed to and that was it. It was never meant to be binge watched like I did, which made it feel more like a chore. Though I will give them points for two things, it wasn't trying to be a carbon copy of The Simpsons and was actually doing its own thing, and like David Spade said in his tweet, it was pretty risky for a network television cartoon. Sadly, it does end on a cliffhanger, as James chases Sammy after kicking him out, trying to get him back. We never get to know how James ended up drowning in that pool, if that even happened to begin with, or it was just a fake out for the opening. In fact, a lot of plot points from the first episode don't show up again, like the gang members that were beating up Sammy in the first episode that sparked his motivation to reunite with James, it never comes back up again. Alright, final thoughts. To me, Sammy is a good example of how when it comes to lost media, the search is usually far more entertaining than the actual piece of media itself. I enjoyed the video that El Supersonic Q made about the show more than the actual cartoon itself. If it weren't for its sudden cancellation and lost media status, then it would have probably just been another show that very little people would remember. To me, the show wasn't really anything special, but maybe one of you would find some form of enjoyment in it. So that being said, that's all I have for this video and if you liked it and you want to see more then be sure to like comment share and subscribe and give me a low five yeah see that's that's fucking annoying